papers now and I'm joined by journalist and author Nikki Hodgson and also the editor of Spiked Online, Tom Slater. And there they are. Good morning to you both. Um, I'll just start off with you, um, Nikki. I'm looking at the front page of The Observer and it's an interesting one. So international nurses in the UK forced to pay if they quit. Now, it wasn't too long ago that we were all clapping for our doctors and nurses. What's this all about? Absolutely. So apparently international nurses make up about 44% of the NHS workforce and this is saying that both NHS and private nurses are being forced to pay up to £14,000 back for costs of training, flights, etc. if they decide to leave the profession. Now given the huge strains on nursing staff at the moment. This just seems absolutely barbaric, totally unfair given the services they have given us during the pandemic. And uh, the Royal College of Nurses is now demanding an inquiry. Absolutely. Um, and um, just switching um, gears here then, um, Tom, the, looking at this story of um, Christian Eriksson and the headline we're seeing there, Eriksson's golden moment, you don't have to be a football fan to just see what an important and exciting moment this is. No, it was very exciting, very emotional. Of course, Christian Eriksson um, went down with and um, had a cardiac arrest on the field during the Euros in the Denmark versus Finland game last year and now he's made his return to international football and in a pretty special way so in Denmark's friendly against the Netherlands he came on in the 52nd minute he scored within two minutes it was his first touch just an, inc an incredible return for him um, he's, he's recently signed with, with Brentford after being released from Inter Milan because of his of his health problems but the start of a, of a comeback for a, a player that um, I think a lot of people in England have certainly taken into, the, into their hearts from his time in the Premier League but I think across the world as well given that that terrible moment in the Euros last year, which now we've got a bit more of a happy ending to it. Like. Absolutely. Gosh, I think almost everyone remembers that moment. And it's just, it was so emotional, actually, just seeing him score that goal. Absolutely brilliant. Thank goodness for that. Um, and Nikki, just looking at um, the story um, here in the Sunday Telegraph, it's very doom, isn't it? So care home residents still being kept in their rooms. What's going on here? It's an appalling story. So it's highlighting the fact that, you know, despite all apparently lockdown measures being released, COVID measures being taken off, care home residents are still being locked in their rooms for up to 24 hours a day in a bid to stop the spread of COVID in them. It feels like too little too late. And, you know, the mental health consequences of keeping older people, vulnerable people separate from others is just despicable. And, you know, what, they, what the report also says is that uh, today, obviously, it's Mother's Day. Many families will be visiting elderly relatives and taking in flowers, but those flowers are being quarantined. And by the time they are given those flowers, they might be dead. So, not the care home residents, the flowers, of course. So, you know, it's just a really shocking story. And uh, apparently the government is bringing in new legislation around care homes on the 1st of April. But like I say, it's just too little too late. Absolutely. It's just so heartbreaking, you know, especially at a time when most of us are able almost to sort of almost get back to normal and you're pushing these people under so much strain. And the mental health effects, you know, that you mentioned, absolutely staggering. And um, Tom, looking, um, sticking with the Telegraph, um, the story mm -hmm. about the Kremlin still aiming for Ukraine regime change, um, says Putin, um, to Putin's ally. Just tell us more about this. Yeah, so Dmitry Medvedev, who's deputy head of the Russian Security Council, also a former president and prime minister of Russia, has, has said that the, one of the key aims of the war is still to, as he puts it, denazify Ukraine. Obviously, that's this vile slur that the Ukrainian leadership is all a bunch of fascists. It's basically code for regime change. It's, it's essentially kind of um, contradicting comments that had originally come from Russia's top general suggesting that they were going to focus on the east of the country and raising some hopes in the west that maybe a climb down was in the offing. But with these comments and with the shelling of Lviv in the west of the country overnight, uh, it suggests that we might be in for more of, of, of the long haul here, it looks like. Well, so as you said, they're very different, isn't it, from that um, so-called regime change that they were talking about. And obviously a lot of people say, be very careful, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. So here we're having that. And um, um, Nikki, I'll come to you. Um, the Foo Fighters, the drummers, you know, um, the, the sad death um, yeah, that we're hearing about yesterday, very, very briefly. Yeah, so there's an obituary here for Taylor Hawkins, who's died at the age of 50 in Bogota when the band were on tour. It's a really lovely written piece, actually, and it highlights his skill, especially coming after Dave Grohl, who was obviously the drummer of Nirvana and very, very celebrated. I think what's really important about this story is people are speculating... Oh. 
speculating about his cause of death and it's not appropriate to do that at this time. No, absolutely. Thank you so much indeed. Nikki Hodgson and also Tom Slazer, grateful for your time. Thank you. And I'll see you, you in just a few minutes' time.